Hey guys, Ivan here, and we are at about 15 days out of Arnold Classic, and we have a lot of interesting physique updates, a lot of them, so we're gonna start with this one first, Patrick Moore. Now he posted this photo right here, but you can see the comment right there, it says, is this a recent photo? And he says, fairly, but not up to date, so it's not exactly today, it's probably not this week, I hope it's not this week, because his glutes do not look peeled, nowhere near. So I hope it's at least like two, three weeks ago, because you don't really see the striations on the glutes. They're not dry. His glutes are not dry. But if you talk about muscularity, if you talk about completeness, this guy has it. He has a full package. Is it going to be enough to crack the top four? Possibly the best case scenario, but he still is the second tier of bodybuilders. He is not on the level of Big Ramy, William Bonac, Dexter Jackson, probably of some other guys as well. But if he nails the conditioning perfectly and if the other guys come a little bit off, he can actually crack the top four. But it's going to be hard beating guys like Steve Kuklo, who was top six at the Mr. Olympia. Also, Josh Nartowitz, one of the biggest guys up there, and so on and so forth. But based on this photo right here, he looks absolutely outstanding. And it's not 15 days out. This is 15 days out, however. He made it clear in the description that this is 15 days out. And he looks lean. He looks lean. He looks ready. This, this in this photo right here. So, I may have set a limit for him, you know, saying that he can't be... Uh, better than top four, but Patrick is that kind of a bodybuilder that can surprise us all like big time and you know win the show. But I mean, it, it's not really something that you should expect, something that I can talk about right here in this video because that would be like a miracle. It's probably not gonna happen based on all we saw, based on all the information that we have, based on these physique updates, the most recent ones, based on the muscularity level of himself, the conditioning. And everything else, you know, his opponents too. If you consider everything else, it's probably gonna be like top four. But let's wait and see. Let's let's wait and see. As for now, he's in very good conditioning, and I'm sure he's going to be in better conditioning come stage time. Patrick is definitely a dark horse. Everybody wants him to do well. But what about Sergio Oliva? He doesn't have as many fans as Patrick, and it's understandable. This guy is not very pleasant guy. He's somehow very angry. You can check his social media, he's constantly arguing with his fans and he has a lot of hate in himself. That's probably because of the expectations that everybody has of him. His father is the legend of the sport and he has a hard time living up to the expectations. But how will he do at this Arnold Classic? When I saw this photo, I was blown away. I don't know how well will he do as far as placings. But I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm sure that this is going to be the best Sergio Oliva Jr. that we ever saw. Ever. And I also know for a fact that he added 10 pounds of muscle since the last time we saw him on stage. You know what that means? 10 pounds for a professional bodybuilder of his level. Just imagine buying 10 pounds of chicken in a store. And imagine putting all that chicken on somebody's body. 10 pounds. 10 pounds is a lot of muscle. So I'm sure he's going to look significantly improved. Significantly. Do I expect as much of him as I expect of Patrick Moore? Unfortunately, not exactly, because he doesn't have that structure, that beautiful, perfect structure that Patrick has. As far as Patrick's structure, it's, it's perfect, it's flawless, basically, but I just don't really like the shape of his quads. As far as Sergio, he has a shape of every single muscle, but he doesn't really have the structure as good as, as Patrick, for example, but he added a ton of muscle, not a ton, 10 pounds, <laughs> but I was close, I guess. And, and here you can see, he's bringing the conditioning and the fullness. He's definitely very, very full, and look at all the veins, and look at the thin skin. So I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive, 100% sure, that this is going to be the best Sergio Oliva that we ever saw up to date. And how will he actually do in terms of placing? I need to do a separate video about this. I really need to do it. I have been promising that to you for a long time now. I need to do it like tomorrow or the day after. But basically, I can expect him to be in the top four if Patrick doesn't really nail everything, the fullness and the conditioning. So I think it's going to be a battle between these two guys. 
uh, whatever spot that they take. If it's gonna be a battle for 8th, 9th, 7th spot, I think they are gonna be very close. It really depends what the big guys bring, like uh, Josh Nartowitz, Steve Kuklo and the others. I do not expect these guys to beat uh, the monsters like Big Remy. Dexter Jackson and William Bonac, of course, those three guys are just on a different level. Everybody else, they can beat. And there is a slight chance that Sergio Oliva can come and win the Arnold Classic. That would be absolutely legendary. I would love to see that. Everybody would love to see that. That would be somewhat of a story. <laughs> Next, we have a physique update, at least a back update of Dayton Diasha, and here you can see that he is not exactly super shredded. I don't think this is going to be the leanest Nathan Diasha that we ever saw. He was a late entry, so I can, I can expect of him to be fuller, fuller than before, because look at the size of him. He's really full and really big. It's only 15 days out, so guys that are this full at that point, you know, just two weeks basically before the show, they usually don't bring the best shape. What can we really expect of Nathan Diasha? He can be fourth place. I think the best case scenario, again, out of that top three, it can be anybody basically for that fourth spot. It could be Cedric McMillan, it could be Nathan Diasha, it could be Sergio, Patrick, Akim Williams even, and so on. Basically anybody almost in the lineup. Almost everybody, so I'm gonna talk about that furthermore in the video, but here you can see that Nathan looks really full. It's going to be probably one of the fullest editions of Nathan Diasha ever since that New York Pro shape, not conditioned like this. I don't think he's going to be in a shape like this. This was just really good conditioning, and I don't think he's going to be like this again. Alright, next we have Luke Sando, and his physique update in the offseason. It seems like Luke is still trying to grow. He is not happy with the size that he has, he wants to be bigger. And bigger is better in bodybuilding, it is. I mean, even though many of you guys just like aesthetics, you prefer guys like Patrick Moore, it's just not what wins the shows, what wins the Mr. Olympia. Size is still very, very important, and it should be. And it should be. I like size. I like to see the monsters. Who doesn't like to see the, the, the freak show? I mean, that's why the tickets are being sold, basically. Everybody wants to see the biggest guys. Luke is extremely big for his frame. He's basically filled up to the max and he's still trying to get bigger. You can watch his videos on his Instagram and on YouTube. He is training like a maniac and he's getting thicker every day. Like, you would think it's impossible to add any more muscle to this frame, but he still somehow manages. He still isn't at the level of Big Ramy as far as, you know, muscularity. He doesn't really have the same... Um, frame like Big Ramy to add that much muscle, but as much as he can, he will. Look at his front double bicep. Look at the vacuum. He actually can still pull the vacuum, which is a good sign, which means that his uh, gut is not going to be the standard probably at the next show, so he takes care of that. And that's nice to see something like that. A monster like this still taking care of his stomach, of his midsection. I like to see that. I think what Louis Marco started back five years ago, probably more, ten years ago maybe, is working now. He was talking about the bubble guts all the time and apparently it worked. It's changing. Things are changing in bodybuilding. Judges don't like to see the standard bubble guts anymore, the audience even less, and that's a positive change in bodybuilding. I love to see that happening. Also, we have a physique update of uh, Sean Roden. It's not really a physique update, but it's a body fat percent update. And also an arm update, and basically you can see his face, it's a moon face, it, it's a bloated face, it's a fat face, for sure. The arms, pretty much the same thing, pretty fat arms, big arms, but not conditioned, no separation in the shoulders, not very conditioned arms. Overall, it looks like he's having some time off, of the stuff, not of the training, of course. And I have my sources, who are training in the gym where he is training, and they're telling me that he doesn't really train very hard, he's just being there pretty much every day, but he doesn't take it seriously, and of course, why would he, you know, spend his body right now, and he knows that he's not gonna compete anytime soon because of his law issues, so he's taking it easy, and he posted his story, and uh, Nick Strength and Power, of course, made a video about it, and he probably wasn't happy with the response and with his commentary, so very soon after, he removed the story. 
but he didn't only remove it, he also uploaded a new photo of himself and it's not a recent photo, obviously. You can see his arms and his shoulders and his face, it looks lean. But what is interesting is that he is not shredded, contest ready, it's probably mid part of the prep. So he's kind of sending us mixed, mixed messages like, maybe I look like this, maybe I look like that, you can't know. Because he was probably insecure, because all the comments and all the videos about his previous physique update, which is normal. It's understandable, but I mean, it's obvious. This is not his body currently, if the previous video was him right now. And that's really unfortunate. I'm really looking forward to seeing Sean Roden back on that stage. I really hope that those problems will be resolved soon and that he isn't guilty, in fact, and that he will be able to compete at a Mr. Olympia and all the other top shows. Let's wait, let's wait and see. And another thing, guys, for the end of this video... I made a vlog channel, so if you want to follow myself, my prep, and basically if you want to learn more about um, my training, my diet, I'm probably gonna do a full day of eating videos, I'm gonna talk about nutrition and the supplements, you know what I mean, and all kinds of stuff, whatever you want me to speak about, and or whatever you wanna see, just let me know down below in the comment section of this video, just go even bodybuilding vlogs, that's the channel, subscribe, like this video, comment down below, and I will make it happen. If you talk about hardcore, high intensity, blood and guts type of training, this is somebody who is representing it today, and Bales, and his training partner is actually Leroy Davis, you know, the guy who was training with Dorian Yates in the blood and guts movie, you know, the one who was yelling, one more, one more, and uh, these guys are actually training together and they have a clothing line, and it's a really good one, I will leave the link to the website down below in the description, they sent me this shirt, fuck off I'm training and this shirt I love this shirt look at this old school kind of stuff lumberjack shirt is how they call it and I always wanted to have one I couldn't find one in Serbia so I asked them to send me this one and they did it they sent it and it looks amazing so I definitely encourage you to go and buy one for yourself if you like this kind of stuff because I don't know where else can you find this so the link to the website is down below in the description. These guys are all about high, high intensity, hardcore training. And I honestly believe in that. And that's why I don't have a problem to speak about it or to tell you guys that it's a good clothing line. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like it down below. Subscribe for more bodybuilding videos like this. And uh, all the best, guys. Bye-bye.